understand that abstinence is what we're trying to stress in our classrooms. But you're asking me to lecture them with minimal guidance and training without even considering what they may see or hear from other outside sources. How is this a learning opportunity for students? I, where is the emotional connection from learning through discussion? Teenagers are curious cats, I tell you. There are so many accessible sources with stories, opinions, myths, and inaccurate depictions that center around sexual experiences through the use of entertainment. What people tend to forget is that teenagers are already bombarded with movies, television shows, music, novels, and access to the internet for information regarding sexual health, and they don't actually explain everything that happens regarding sexual activity. I mean, the information is everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. That was my rendition of going everywhere around the world. I mean, it's no wonder media has become a primary source or is becoming the primary source for these curious cats. And maybe, just maybe, we need to realize that fact and start talking to them as adults, having these conversations with them. I want my students to feel comfortable talking about sexual health without looking at it from a negative or inappropriate perspective. So I did what any normal teacher would do in a sticky situation like this. I made it my mission to get the students to start talking. Now, I know many of you may find this class completely awkward and you don't want to be here and I totally get it. I get it. I was in the same seat as you from back in the day, let's be clear. But remember, I am here to give you some guidance and support about sexual health. I want us to feel comfortable having these conversations with one another. So, this time, I want us to say some of the words that you're going to hear throughout the semester or throughout this class that you may find completely awkward when in reality, it's all part of sexual health. I'm going to say a word and you're going to repeat after me. Oh, think of this as a choir performance and I am your conductor. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, 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 so hold on. Let's get ready. Sorry, high school musical in me. <laughs> Hold on. <sighs> toss, toss. Okay, okay. Whew. Whew. Conductor is ready. <sighs> and genitals. Come on. Humor me, please, everybody. Ready? Genitals. Uh, genitals? Okay, we're almost there. Remember, we're all in this together. High school musical style. All right, one more. Genitals. 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 Y'all did amazing. Okay, okay. Now, you're going to hear these terms throughout the course, so I want you to feel comfortable saying them out loud rather than avoiding them as much as possible. After this, we began doing it for multiple words that made us feel like it was uncomfortable or inappropriate to say out loud. Okay, this should be easy because I've heard many of you play this game before outside of this classroom, so I know that you guys can do this. But remember, instead of saying this obnoxiously loud, we're going to say this in a confident and respectful tone. Okay, ready? Penis. 
Penis. Okay. Good. Penis. Penis. All right. One more time. Respectful, confident, not obnoxious. Okay. We're going to do that one more time. Penis. Penis. Y'all did great. Great job, everybody. Wonderful. Beautiful. Bravo. Y'all are talented. All right. One more word. And we're going to say this confidently and respectfully. Remember this. All right. Vagina. Come on, guys. I know you guys can say this. I'm not asking you to write an essay. I just want you to say the word. We'll do it without the humming. I promise. We'll do it without the humming. Vagina. Vagina. Okay. Okay. Almost there. Just say the word. Vagina. Vagina. I get it. It's awkward. But these are terms that you're going to hear throughout the semester that I want you to recognize as terminology and not something that makes you feel uncomfortable or inappropriate to say in everyday conversation. That's why I want you to say these things out loud because you're going to hear these terms and you're going to use them and you need to recognize them as appropriate words. So one more time, say it loud, say it proud. Like Katy Perry, I wanna hear you roar, okay? Vagina. I know this style of teaching may seem a little radical for the average classroom. I mean, I wouldn't have even considered it if it weren't for the pedagogical research suggestions I found for classroom activities. That's when I realized one of the key fundamentals when teaching a classroom in something very similar to, well, this, is having teacher immediacy to promote support and guidance for our students. Teacher immediacy encourages students to engage with the teacher on a more personal and social level through intimate connection and closeness for support. These interactions happen in both verbal communication and nonverbal communication, which makes this super important when engaging students through a concept that's not easy to talk about and especially engaging with students who may not feel comfortable talking about this. Teacher immediacy can be found through verbal communication or the way that we use specific language to interact with our students. For example, all right, dudes, this is what we're gonna talk about today. All right, kiddos, you guys should find some talent agencies because every one of you did great. No, 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 let's try that again. All right, everybody, it's time to learn. Much better. Nonverbal communication is also very critical. We may not really think about it as much because nonverbal cues are just human nature, but they're super critical in how we actually have conversations with others, such as, That's why it's key to understand how teacher immediacy can be applied in an everyday classroom, including sexual health. So, I made it my mission to be as open as possible with my students. I want to give them the information they need to know to be successful when it comes to sexual activity. Wait a minute, that came out wrong. Or, let me be clear, I'm not saying I hope they're successful in any sexual activity. Whew. No, I'm just saying I want them to have the best resources and information for best practices to protect themselves and to have the best support system a teacher can offer. 